Force at a distance is a really important idea in physics. I've got a quick demonstration here. So you see, this paperclip is being held by the magnet, but they're not in contact. That's what we mean by force at a distance. And so we're going to describe that by talking about what we call the force field. So in between the south pole of this magnet and this, which is now an induced magnet, there is a force acting in that space there. So that's induced magnetism. And we can explain that using domain theory of magnetism. That's the main way to explain magnetism. Imagine the metal inside the paperclip to be a bit like this piece of plastic with all these kind of little bar magnets in it. And at the minute, they are not pointing in any particular direction. Now we call these little bar magnets that any kind of ferrous metal like iron, cobalt or nickel is made out of, we call them magnetic domains. At the minute, the paperclip is not in a magnetic field, so they're not aligned in any kind of way. But when I bring a magnet close to them, they all start to align. And now, because all of the little individual magnetic domains are all generally pointing in the same direction, there's going to be a magnetism to that, and that's when we call it an induced magnet. Now, unlike these, as soon as we take it out of the magnetic field, they randomise again, and it's no longer a magnet. So currently, this is not a, ma a magnet. It won't attract another paperclip. But the moment I bring another magnet close to it, it itself becomes a magnet. That's the main way to explain magnetism. So whenever we've got a force acting over a certain distance, we can say we've got a force field. In this case, we have a magnetic force field. So that is a field which acts on magnets, either permanent ones or induced ones. And we represent force fields by using lines, what we call lines of flux. The closer they are together, the stronger the field is. You need to know in physics, A-level or GCC, about three fields. Electric fields, magnetic fields or gravitational fields. And there's some things that are the same and there's some things that are different. And it's really important you distinguish between the three of them. Many students, when they're asked about electric fields, they start talking about magnetic fields. And that's because there are some similarities between electric fields and magnetic fields. And that's that opposites attract and likes repel. But remember that electric fields operate on charged particles and magnetic fields, they operate on magnetic poles. Gravitational fields are different to that though because they can only ever be attracted. You can't have negative mass. So in gravitational fields, all masses attract other masses. In a electric field, we always do the field lines pointing from positive to negative. And in a magnetic field, we always do our field lines pointing from north to south. You need to be really familiar with the shapes of the fields around charged particles or the shapes of fields around magnetic objects like a bar magnet or a solenoid. Another really interesting difference about magnetic and electric fields is this idea that you can have a point charge, so you can have a positive charge existing on its own, but you can't have a north pole without a south pole. You cannot have a monopole, a single pole magnet. All fields are actually in three dimensions, even though we draw them and represent them in two dimensions. I really like this little demonstration my technicians made which is actually got a magnet in a bottle and it shows you the three-dimensional nature of the magnetic field. Thanks Gina, that's awesome. Thanks a lot for watching.